It's been a year since I've created and filled up my Johnson Sue inspired bioreactor and now is the time to uncover if I have managed to create black gold. I will go over a few things. First, a quick recap on what a bioreactor is and how it differs from a regular compost pile. I will discuss my observations and expectations concerning my own bioreactor. I will of course open it up and see what the results of the compost are. And then I will tell how you can actually use it in your garden. A Johnson Sue bioreactor is a static and aerobic way of creating very rich and especially fungal dominant compost. This differs from regular compost in that regular compost tends to be more bacteria dominant. Both variants of compost are of course very good for your garden. However, the Johnson Sue compost will introduce more fungal spores to your soil, which in turn will create fungal networks, which are highly beneficial for your soil and of course therefore your crops. Now, I have filled up my bioreactor mostly with donkey manure and leaves. If you want more details on the process and how I built my bioreactor in the first place, then do watch my first video. Link will be in the description. So before we continue, I do have to mention that this is an inspired version of the bioreactor and not a one-on-one -on -one copy. However, I do believe that this one has functioned just fine. So by just looking at this, I can tell that the level of material has dropped significantly, at least by 50%, if not more. It has also taken some of the wire mesh with it down. So the construction could have been a little bit more sturdy. There are some weeds growing in here, but not too many, so that's fine. The door in front of the bioreactor has actually been pushed outwards and one of the support has actually broken off. So not the best of constructions, but it did its job and you know, it hasn't gone all the way outside. If the bioreactor was successful, then the resulting compost should be very dark and clay-like. Now, some of that compost that was inside of the bioreactor has actually been pushed out, especially at the bottom of the bioreactor. And it's looking very dark and clay-like, so that is a good sign. Now, if I take a sample over here, just underneath the leaves, it's, um, it's looking quite dark. This compost is kind of moist. It's not fully decomposed yet, but it's looking pretty clay-like. If I squeeze it like this, you can see that it retains its shape. Now, like I said before, this is not fully decomposed yet, but it does look very dark and clay-like. And this is only just the top. I expect the results inside of the bioreactor to be better, uh, but we'll see in a bit. I can't really see any worm activity here at the top of the compost. I have introduced worms to the Johnson Sue bioreactor. It might be that they are deeper inside of the compost or that they have just migrated towards my regular compost bin, which is just here on the left. All right, time to open up the bioreactor and see what the result is after one year of composting. All right, this one is stuck. There we go. Let's put this to the side. So right off the bat, I can see two very distinct layers. The upper one over here is kind of dry to the touch at least, and not as decomposed, while the lower layer seems very dense, very compacted and, uh, well, wet actually. I can see a lot of activity from critters over here, so uh, some worms actually even. But let's dig through this towards the center tunnel and see what we can find. I'm just going to push the top layer to the side and flip it over. And if I'm getting deeper towards that first layer, 
I can still see there's a lot of material that could be more decomposed. There's still some sticks in there. Um, not really a lot of worms. It's, it's actually quite dense over here in the middle. Now what I can see is that this is again the dark clay-like material that we're aiming for. So this could decompose more, but I think it's usable. Or I could leave it to decompose even more. Let's dig a little bit further. So I'm gonna push this to the side. I'm expecting about the same result closer to the uh, central air column. And indeed, still quite some smaller sticks, but still this dark clay-like material that I will show you. Um, over here, it's still pretty loose, but if I squeeze it in my hand like this, again, like a clay ball, and uh, it retains its form, it retains moisture. Oh, well, so much for the form, but it's a, uh, oh wait, if, yeah, I can actually squeeze some moisture out of there. Look at it go. This is the perfect consistency that it should be at. So not 100% decomposed, but probably usable. All right, I have moved most of the first layer to the side. As you can see, I have encountered a lot more young worms. So that's a pretty good sign. Now I'm going to dig even deeper to that more compacted layer at the bottom and see if there is any difference between these two. I can see that there are some not fully decomposed leaves over here. This is one, for example. I think I'm gonna actually get myself a shovel. Maybe I should have let with that. <laughs> Let me just fully break it apart. I'm encountering some sticks that I actually started with filling up this bioreactor. And over here I can see it still has that manure kind of a color. So it's kind of yellowish, brownish and a lot of worms. Let me take you up for a closer look. All right, so this is the front piece that I just shoveled away from the rest. I'm not really sure if you can see it, but it has that yellowish uh, tint to it, which is the same kind of color that the original donkey manure was. It doesn't smell at all, even though it might look funky, but it smells like a fresh forest floor and as most of you know that is a good sign there are some worms over there in the back as well over here they uh, wriggle they, they wiggled away wriggle away they wriggled away um but yeah i'm expecting this layer to be like that all of the way so Looks good, looks very decomposed. It's very, very moist and wet to the touch. I say this is pretty much a success. Now that was all fun and games, but how can you actually use this compost in your garden? Well, that's actually very simple. You can use it as it is. So you could mix it up into your existing soil, say 50-50 or whatever you can spare. You can add it directly around your plants as a very concentrated compost and you can use it as a very very rich growing medium to germinate your seeds in and grow your seedlings. You can also make an extract out of this that you can then spray or sprinkle over your soil or onto your plants and this is a very effective way to cover a lot of ground. To do this you want to add two to three handful of compost to a bucket of water say 15 to 20 liters or four to five gallons and stir it vigorously for a few minutes. You can do this by hand by using a stick or use a hand drill with a rudder-like thing at the end of the drill bit. Uh, this is just to dislodge and break apart as many of the microbes from the organic matter into the water. 
When the compost is fully mixed into the water, you can then strain it into another bucket or a watering can. If you want to use a watering can to sprinkle the extract over your garden, then I say a regular sieve will do. But if you want to use a spray, then I'd suggest to use something like a cheesecloth or a muslin bag, for example. Once you have sprinkled the extract onto your garden, make sure to water it again afterwards so that all the microbes can get really into your soil. And on hot days, you want to pre-water your soil so that the microbes find themselves in a wet environment and not a very dry one. Will I do this again? And will I do something different in the future? Yes, I will do it again because I think it's good for the overall health of my soil and therefore the health of the crops and therefore my health. Will I change anything on the design? Um, I think I will make the structure a little bit sturdier, especially the door. And I will probably also add a pallet to the bottom, much like the original design, just to create a little bit more airflow from the bottom of the bioreactor. Lastly, a few tips. If you have the compost of a bioreactor and you want to create a new one, then you can actually mix the compost of the previous bioreactor into the new material and that will inoculate the whole bioreactor with the desired microbes giving your whole bioreactor a head start on the process. I will also put a link in the description below to a PDF file written by Dr. Johnson himself with all the information on how to build your own bioreactor and how to use it. It's a super practical guide and very useful. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it and that it was informative. If so, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.